Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we're gonna see if I was a good boy or a bad boy. Now, let's see what's inside. Now, it does look like the old-fashioned boob tube TVs, uh, <laughs> but we'll see if that's what it really is. I mean, if I'm watching TV while I'm in my workshop, maybe I'll cut a finger or two. Let's see what we have. Plenty of sandpaper and some sanding pads. So I guess you can imagine what I've got. Let's see. That's a nice sando. So those are basically my new sanding uh, tools that I'm gonna be using when I'm sanding on the lathe. And I'm gonna show you why I prefer it this way versus the old fashioned uh, hand paper in the, <laughs> hand paper, sandpaper in the hand and sanding over the wood or uh, using a drill to do the same job. The good thing about these is that they can swivel. All I have to do is loosen the knob and turn it into any angle that I want. Uh, and the good side is they have wheel bearings instead of just plain uh, drilled holes. So that's going to help with the movement of the sanding pad. Before we use the tool, we have to make a minor assembly and let's see what we have. In the package, we have the handle, the sanding pad, a small washer, a big washer with a set screw and an Allen key. The washer with a set screw always goes on top to prevent the whole assembly from falling apart. Now let's see how to put it together. Well, we get the sanding pad, we attach the small washer to it, then we insert it into the handle, we add the big washer and tighten the set screw. I can always adjust the drag of the sanding pad just by widening or tightening the gap between the two washers and the attachment surface, but that is done at a later stage. For right now, as I spin it by hand, it spins perfectly. Now, let me tell you why I bought so many. This is my original two and I've had it for so many years. And there lies the problem, I have only one of these tools. And anytime I had to change the sandpaper, I had to unhook it and then loop the other one. All this frequent hooking and unhooking wears off the hooks of the sanding pad and the loops or the cloth fabric of the sandpaper disc. And within five or six changes, they don't hold anymore. And anytime the disc spins, it becomes a flying saucer. Now I'm gonna have a dedicated tool for each sandpaper grid that I use. Let's do a demonstration of the tool. Now, there's primarily two methods of sanding on the lathe. One is taking the sandpaper in your hand and moving your fingers as quickly as possible along the grain of the wood so that it matches the speed of the rotation of your spindle. And that is important so that you don't get deep scratches or areas when you sand it a lot more just because you held your hand in one place for way too long. Here is a little demonstration of what I mean. And this is an example of what uh, I just uh, mentioned. Uh, we held our hand for way too long in one spot and we see that little concave section that is right here. And if we rotate a little bit more, we do see a little bit of a deep gouge right here. Obviously that's wood and usually it's not a big problem because we can sand some more and get rid of it. But in my case, since I'm doing writing instruments, the width of the wood is very thin 
and usually extra sanding means the difference between a successful project and a project you have to start over again. The other way to sand is to have that sanding pad that we saw earlier and attach it to something. Well, one of them is a drill and the other one is the tool that I have, so we're going to look at the drill first. In case of the drill, again, that's a very perfect way to sand, but again, you have a difference in speed between what the drill can rotate and what the spindle rotates here. Again, let's follow up with an example. And as we saw again, we got a little bit deeper concave section right here just by holding our drill in one place for way too long. And then of course we have our tool. The uh, sanding pad is attached to the tool uh, and the ball bearings help it rotate, but we don't have an external power source. So what that means is that as soon as the sanding pad touches the spinning wood, it will begin to spin at about the same RPM as our spindle. And that kind of helps prevent such deep gouges forming into the wood itself. And what we're going to do right now is remove that particular concave section that we created by the hand and the drill. So we see that not only we removed the concave section, holding the two in one place for a little bit too long doesn't remove as much material as the hand and the drill. And that's why I prefer this handheld tool. So you can say I've been a good boy. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.